Yeah. When everybody else's time is, so shoot, it's Saturday. We're going to get it started like we always do on time. It's too far going. Over. That's right. Well, welcome back, everyone. It's a, <laughs> This is, uh, I don't know how much of a reunion it is because uh, uh, maybe it's a reunion from this morning and, and yesterday. Oh, that's funny. The, the emails have been going out, so we'll see who joins. We've had yeah. a few people sign up that were from Saturdays. Yeah. Um, Hey, man, it's all good. Hey, shoot. Hey, man, whoever wants to hear it, I want to talk it. So it's all good. You know, right, we, that's, it. <laughs> that's it. Hey, man, that's it. That is it, 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 it. All right. Does anybody know who created the food pyramid? In the back of my mind somewhere I know and I can't think of it. Okay. The FDA? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Someone who wanted to make money? Pretty close. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, indirectly, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ultimately, that's what happens. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I mean... But so essentially, the food pyramid was created by the cigarette, by the tobacco companies. Right, because as cigarettes were starting to become more maligned, right, people started speaking out increasingly about its, you know, smoking and all the different things, and the and the tobacco companies couldn't refute it like they used to back in the day, like they used to when they first started. Basically, what they did was they turned their all of their knowledge of food technology essentially the creation of addictive substances, which were first cigarettes, and they turned that knowledge into creating food, creating food that had the same effect as cigarettes as far as creating addictive foods, right? With all of the ingredients and um, all the different things that they put in food to, to make food um, addictive, essentially, right? All the different agents and chemicals and um, all the food science, basically the drug science, the drug science turned into food science and basically they created a lot of drugs that they could put in food to basically have the same effect that they had as a result to cigarettes as they, as they did with cigarettes as far as making foods that people just got addicted to because of its content, right? So that is- Cereals that. Were, were the top of the pyramid. So- that's where they have a yeah. pyramid got built. Yeah, yeah, and so, and they've kind of moved the pyramid around as far as how many servings of this and things are on the top or on the bottom, the bottom to the top, they move things around. And essentially they also, you know, they, they started talking about how sugar was not the issue. It was really a lack of exercise and basically just how these tobacco companies who were the most powerful companies in the world at the time, the, like the richest companies in the world in America were these tobacco companies at the time and how they lobbied the government to essentially um, categorize food, recategorize food, and and basically dictate what was, what was um, suggested or advocated for to the public, right? So... Saying that to say, a lot of times in life, we don't understand why things are the way they are because we don't know the history of a lot of things. And it's super important to really, to really, you know, sit down and read some things. The internet is a wonderful place. You can learn so many, so much about so many things, but it will, in a lot of ways, when you, when you research things and you find the history of things, it makes what you're looking at today make a lot more sense. Makes things look a lot more sense, right? And really that is that is that is a that is a skill and attribute, a you know, that is a skill and an attribute, that is a discipline, I guess you could say, that we need to hold if we want to be able to live our lives well. Right. This class historically was Mindset Saturdays, and basically it was like it was to help people learn, it was to help people live well by learning how to think learning how to think properly. That's what this whole Saturday thing started off as. And 
historically I've given information about a lot of different things just that most people would not have known just because it was something to kind of prime the mind and open it up to the fact that there's a lot of things that we believe just because we've heard them for so long that we think are true because we've heard them and held them so long that we think are true or a lot of things that we don't understand because of the beliefs that we hold they they kind of blind us to what we're actually looking at or believing that something could be different than what we have been believing right or accepting the fact that something is different than than a belief we've held for so long and kind of like we talked about this morning in class there we have eventually as a result we we come to believe that beliefs and knowing not beliefs and knowledge are the same and we figured out this morning that that's not actually the case right not automatically right that has to be proven that that's the case you know on a case by case basis so just little things like that just little things to think of that would really surprise you um are are really there's really interesting a lot of interesting things in life to think about and to look at when we are you know to just get a better understanding of where we are and what's going on in the world and um and with ourselves and in ourselves and things like that right so all right well so it's been a while How's everybody been? Where's everybody been? How's everything? How's everything going? I know I've seen most of you recently, some of you semi-recently, right? How's how's everyone been? How's it going? What it do? What's it do? What's been doing? I'll start. All right. Well <laughs> Th things have been fantastic. Overall, things have been fantastic. I am, you know, I come to practice as often as I can. I pay attention to, you know, watching the videos when I can't make it. Um, <clears throat> alternatively, sometimes I go to sleep listening to your voice. <laughs> <laughs> because that penetration matters. So, you know, the practice, it matters to me. And, um, I just drove to uh, Dartmouth, Massachusetts last week with my daughter and my granddaughter, visiting my son and his wife and his son. And his wife and I have had an ad adversarial relationship. And the whole way up there, I just kept re like lifting her up in my mind. I remembered the conversation you had a few weeks ago about your mom and your grandparents. Yeah. And you just need to keep lifting those people up in your mind and, and stop talking about the negative, talk about the positive. And the whole way there, I, I, was, I was continuing to have this conversation in my mind. And we had the best visit, bar none ever, wow. ever. It was beyond fabulous beyond fabulous wow and i attribute it to showing up not expecting her to be at her worst and not allowing myself to be at my worst mm -hmm. okay it was fabulous okay so i'm gonna come i'm gonna come back to you um I'm going to come back to you because I, I want to ask you a question that's kind of going, it'll go kind of into what we're doing. So I just don't want to do it yet, but okay. that is because you were doing something and that is, and it's really important what you're doing. So uh, that's awesome. But I'm glad, I'm glad you're proving it. I'm glad you're proving what is that true and acceptable will of God, as they say, right? Pr prove it, right? And you can only do that, right? By practicing and playing, right? So showing up to practice and putting it into use. So absolutely. That's wonderful. All right. What about anybody else? How's everyone else been? What's been ha what's been happening with everyone? I'll take a shot of it. I'll go. There so, you go. How's everybody doing first and foremost? Man, good to see you. Beautiful thing. So I know I've been a little bit MIA, but for good reason. So what I what I've been doing is really just pouring more into myself. Yes. And I took a, I took a step back off of just like um like platforms and self. Right, because I know we get get we get bombarded with so much information, and I know I'm one of those people that I I, I chat, I see something, and then I go study something else, I look at something else, and then I'm all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? How about let me start utilizing the information that I already have and put it in practice. 
So one of the ways I started doing that is started going live on Instagram every Thursday, seven o'clock. And I've been doing it for a month already. And I'm like, okay, I, I see what's going on now. So I, I I hear people all the time. The only way you get better at doing things is actually doing the thing. And I heard something from a guy named Chris Williamson, and he said, repeated recall over repeated exposure. So a lot of times we get in front of things and we, we see it and we say, oh, I know what that is. I'll do it next time. Or I see that. But it doesn't really register until you start doing the activity. So I said, you know what? Let me start doing like the activity of things instead of just keep looking up and researching. Because I've been finding myself researching, 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 finding more information about this, more information about that. And I say, you know what? Let me just let me let me just put into the universe the things that I already know that I'm familiar with, and then keep practicing those things and see how I feel with it initially. And then after that, I can say, you know what? I can make a sound judgment on how I actually feel about this particular information after putting it into practice and say, hey, this thing right here applies to me or it doesn't. And I've just been doing that continuously. Well, over the like the last month or so. But that's the way I've just been processing information and, you know, tackling these things, just finding my own groove and figuring out what works for me. And that's just where I've been at with pretty much everything. And that's wonderful. You said a couple of important things in no particular order, but a couple of important things. One, this, this no, all the information we that we talk about and will ever talk about is really all how it relates to you. This journey is about you. As as each of well, each of us as individuals, this journey called life is about you. It's a it's a self real it's a journey of self realization, of realizing who you are. And to your point, when you're walking around, even if it's the best of intentions and the best of information, when you're walking around just listening to everybody, after a while, it just becomes information overload, and and, and you just become like a, a a receptacle for information that you never really get to use, that you never get to apply. You don't even know if it's valuable or not. You don't know how valuable it is or not because there's no application with it. And I, I tell people all the time that when you first hear something, that's one thing. But whatever you heard, whether you like it or not, but whatever you heard, if you ever want to become the owner of that information, you have to start applying it. You have to start applying it so that what you heard, you can become not a renter of it or a hearer of it, but, but through doing, you become an owner of it. And when you start applying that, what you've heard, whatever, to whatever degree and extent you can, that becomes a habit as far as of application, because it's, there's a habit of application. There's a habit of, you know, um, deferred occupancy. Like I heard it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get to it. And it's not necessarily um, it's not necessarily uh, what's the word I'm looking for. Um, um, you know, um, it's not necessarily like you're like you're delaying it. Like you're not. It's not. It's not. Um, you know when you keep putting something off um, correct um, whatever that the word when you keep putting something off right procrastination and, procrastination yes it's not that it's procrastination but we keep thinking oh I'm going to do this oh let me watch this video oh let me hear this oh let me watch this oh let me hear this and you are you can in fact be getting good information but without applying it it's just things that you heard they're not necessarily things that you know when you apply them, they become things that you know. They may be things you heard, they may be things that you even believe. But as we talked about in the class earlier this morning, belief and knowledge are not the same thing inherently, right? If if they if you test them and prove them to be so, they can be. But a belief and something we believe it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's something that we know, meaning that it's actually knowledge, meaning that it's actually gnosis or truth, right? So it's good to hear that you got quiet and took some time for yourself and 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 really paid attention to yourself and figured out what made sense to you, what could you use that you already had, and then you start growing your own, you start growing your own garden, so to speak, right? From within yourself, from within yourself. That's the most powerful garden, that's the most powerful place to be is the ability to go within yourself. That's why it says in the book, seek first, right? The kingdom of God and his righteousness inside, right? The kingdom of heaven is in you, so going within you first is where all the power is, is where all the all your answers are. What does it say? Uh, the the foundation the foundation of good is the foundation of good of good is the foundation of good is in you if you will ever dig, right? Mm -hmm. And and so everything is in you. Everything that we're looking out for, out for to be good and to be happy and to be well and beautiful is actually in us. But we take so much information and we're living so fast in the world that everything is always out. It's always out. We're reacting to what happened on the outside. We respond to it on the outside and we take very little to no time of going within ourselves and actually getting in touch with all the power 
that we are. That's within us, not, not on the outside, but within us. So I'm really glad to hear that, um, that you're doing that as well. So um, yeah, man, keep doing your thing. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, by, by practicing, you make what you, the knowledge, the information you hear, you, you are able to make it your own. And you're able to determine what's, what's worthy and truly what's worthy and valuable to you in your life. And knowledge of self is the first commandment. Know thyself. That's the first one. And most of us don't know ourselves well enough to know anything else, right? right? And based on the knowledge of ourself, that is how we present ourselves to the world and how we see the world. So with that, if we're ignorant of self, then it's hard to have true knowledge. It's impossible to have true knowledge of anything else, really, right? So that is awesome, man. Congratulations. That's wonderful. Appreciate that, Coach. Sir, good to see you. Yes, sir. Wonderful. All right. What else we got? Um, Monique shared in the chat, she has her headphones on, um, but she said she wanted to talk about how well this stuff works on her husband, Mr. Tally, but he's sitting right next to her and she doesn't want to give up his secret sauce. So oh, she did ask me if I could just share with everybody because okay. she's using her mind basically to, to do her thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you, as you really start to understand what the information really means, what we've been talking about here for so long, for over a year on this Saturday call, or what we talk about during the week or on the new Saturday calls, is, is what we're actually going to, the first thing we're going to start off with today. But when you come to the true understanding that it's not, it's not about other people, it's about you. When you come to understand that the only, the only person you have to convince of your desire being acceptable, um, possible, and doable is you. The, the misunderstanding um, is that we, or the, the, the misunderstanding is that, is the belief that we have to change people in order to get what we want. So we spend so much time trying to change people, convince people, beg people, plead with people, whatever else, because we see them as the means to our desired end. But when you understand what we've been saying here and when you apply it, like, like we're hearing, you will start to see that even though you believe that, it's not actually true. It's not actually true. It is believed to be true, but it's not actually true. That there is, the truth is there's no one to change but self. When you change who you are, your world changes, you change what you see and you change how you see things. And you start to understand that your physical world is is nothing but a mirror, but a reflection of showing you who you are and who you believe yourself to be. And you need the world to show you that because you don't, you don't, you're not always conscious of what's in your mind and what you're thinking. And number two, you don't know. How do you know you got what you wanted if you don't ever see it? How do you know what you're getting if you don't ever see it? Right? So it is, it is under when you truly understand what's happening, when you go do like uh, Leslie talked about. When you do like Leslie talked about, you literally can see how your world will reflect what you have been telling yourself. As we've been saying, what you tell yourself is true is true. What you repeatedly tell yourself is true is true. And when you start to realize what you tell you is true, then you put more focus on what you are telling you, right? And you use every experience in the world, whether you like it or don't like it, to either keep telling yourself the same thing to get more of it or stop telling yourself that same thing, to stop that and tell yourself something new, to see something new, to have a different experience, right? You start learning the skill, right? Of being a magician, right? Mm -hmm. Of saying abracadabra, of being, of learning how to um, change your, your physical world by first changing you, right? So that's awesome. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, who else? Been a while to see some of you all, so I want to check in, and that's why we're doing this, to see how everybody's been and what's been going on. All right, well, let's get into it then. Let's get into it. Leslie, and everybody can answer, but I asked Leslie the question. So you were... You were riding up to see, you know, your son and things like that. And you were talking that talk on the way up, let's say. So what would we call that? What you were doing with yourself, what would, what would we call that? 
what do people call that? Um, we would call that like affirmations. Okay. All right. Who else? After this, after this, I think it's to determining her outcome. Okay. Okay. Thinking. Are, huh? Thinking. Imagining. Thinking. Imagining. What's a what is a word that people what is a word that people use? Praying. Praying. That's what she was doing. She was praying. Will you put on the first slide, please? Watch. So, uh, Les, are you still here? Okay. Or are you? I'm still here. I just muted myself. Okay. So, uh, just really quickly, tell us tell us the story quickly one more time. So I, my daughter and I and my granddaughter went to visit my son and his family, his wife and son, um, his son's fifth birthday, my grandson. And my daughter-in-law and I have always had uh, kind of an adversarial relationship. And the whole way up driving in the car, it was a 19-hour ride, I just kept repeating and telling myself that we were going to have uh, a fantastic time together that everything that that was has gone that's the past the past is over and we're going to have a beautiful time together and we're going to enjoy each other's company and I just kept repeating that the whole entire time and um, we got there and we had we had the best time we've ever had together as a group of people mm -hmm. okay so as we just discovered, that is what she did was praying. Okay, so let's just say let's just say that's true. She was praying. Who did she who did she involve in her prayer? Myself. No one else. And God. And no one else, right? No one. Else. Yeah, no one else. Right. Okay, uh, Vanessa, will you go down to please to. Uh, verse 24. Okay, right there. All right, so Leslie, since this is your situation, will you please read that, the highlighted part? Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So... What is the key word? What is the key word in there? Believe. Okay. What's the key word in there? Ask. Prayer. It's it's whatever. <laughs> Look at the sentence. You're shaking your head. <laughs> Right? Look at the sentence. What's the key word in there? Whatever. When, when, whenever you want to emphasize something, what do you do? Pray. Whenever you want to emphasize something, what do you do? Believe. Believe. What look at the sentence. Whenever you're talking to somebody and you want to emphasize something, what do you do when you're talking to somebody on the phone? Repeat it. Repeat it. So what is what is repeated in here? Nothing's repeated in there. You. You're going to feel so bad, Leslie. You're going to feel really bad. You. You. Okay. 
Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask, believe you have, and it will be yours. You. Who decided they were going to have the best time ever? I did. Yeah, you. And no one else. You. You. This is what I say. When you understand what's really happening, you understand why things are happening. You understand how to change things. You. Whatever. What is it? Therefore, I tell you, whatever you desire. What did that have to do with her? If you didn't. You kept. This was your desire. This is what you chose. This is what you wanted. So they say, oh, you can't change people. Uh, no, you can't. And yes, you can. And what that means is, is no, you can't change them physically the way you try to, but you can get a different version of them if you decide, if you decide that you want to have a different experience. Because it's not about them, it's about you. So you are now becoming a different person, which means you're going to have a different physical experience. <clears throat> I am not is a different experience than I am something, right? I am not sick is different than I am sick, right? I am not poor is different than I am poor. So when you change the I am, when you change what how what experience I am is having, what, it, what you're aware of being, when you change your consciousness of something, I am this is much different than I am not that, right? So the only thing that changed your world was when you changed the concept of self. You changed your concept of yourself. You became the person who is going to have a good time compared to the person who hasn't had, uh, who hasn't had a good time. You became a different person mentally, psychologically. Did you, did you change skin color? Did you dye your hair blue? Did you, did you get her on the phone and say, you know, we need to talk this through? I'm not saying none of those things ever happened, but what I'm saying is, is that it doesn't matter what you do physically, if you retain or maintain the same mentality, the yeah. same consciousness, if you remain the person that has a bad relationship, what hair dye are you gonna put in? What is the phone call gonna actually be like, right? What, what are you going to do differently than you think, than you think, than you're aware of being, right? So when you are saying what you are saying to yourself, that is praying. That is actually what prayer is. It is changing your self-concept. I am going from the person who has to the person who no longer has. I'm going from the person who didn't have to the person who does have. It doesn't matter if you're changing it to or from or from or to. The effect is how it works is the same. Anything that you want physically, you now pray for, meaning Prayer meaning I now start telling myself a different story. I start telling myself that things are different, but I'm telling myself, you're not telling her. You're not telling your spouse. You're not telling your brother. You're not telling the world. You're not mad at the economy. You're not mad at COVID. You're not mad at your car. You, all the outside things that you're trying to fix, it's almost like dyeing your hair. You're gonna have to keep, you're gonna have to keep doing it. And that's even if it works the first time. So, oh, I was really nice. I bought her a gift basket and I told her I was, I wasn't, I was, I wasn't gonna snore. And then I told her that I'd sleep on the porch, right? Like you have to start doing all these physical things to get your desire. But then the next time you roll around, that's not gonna be enough. Right? You're gonna have to do that or more. But usually it's it's like almost like uh it's almost like um, you know, like the cost of living, right? It's like when you come back next year, that same piece of loaf of bread is not going to be the same price. It may be two cents more, three cents more, same bread. Same person is going to cost you more. The same circumstance is going to cost you more, right? Because you're dealing with it physically. You're chasing something physically, thinking that if you can fix the outside world, that it will be fixed. But the thing you want to be fixed in your outside world must be fixed in your internal world. Because your internal world is the creator of your external or outside world. So when you change you, right? So like when Johnny was saying, hey, you know, I've taken some time off to really sit down with myself and figure this. When you change on the inside, your external world shifts itself to show you because it's always mirroring who you are. 
So when you change, it changes, right? Like your shadow, when you move, it moves. But it, but it always comes right back to you. It always comes back into one. You may look like you got a little separation for a second, but it comes back, right? And so now it's about your movement. It's always mirroring your movement. Your world is just like a shadow. It mirrors your movement. So if you want your world to move, the shadow to move, you have to move first. If you want the mirror to show you a smile, you have to smile first. So what Leslie did was prayer. Prayer is not the traditional customary way where you have to close your eyes a thousand times and you and you have to sit down and everything has to be quiet and you have to you can pray walking up and down the aisle of a grocery store. You can pray while you're driving in your car. You can pray. What you're doing is you're telling yourself a story. You can tell how many stories have you told yourself about something? How many times have you cursed somebody out in your mind? How many times have you told somebody off in your mind? How many told how many times, right? Have you given somebody the business in your mind? You're praying. You are, you, are, you are talking to yourself as the person having an experience. And that which starts in mind always comes to hand. God's, God's mind and your hand are one. God's mind and your hand are one. Whatever's in your hand is in the mind of God. That's the only way it's there. You're conscious of being. That's why you're aware like something's in your hand. That what, whatever you're aware of in your hand is because... First, there was awareness of it in your mind. It's the only way it got to your hand. Right? Praying is not, is not what everybody has made it out to be for years. Like I said, you don't have to sit down. You don't have to close your eyes. You don't have to stop driving. You don't have to turn a certain direction. You don't have to have candles on or an outfit. It is Praying is literally what you are believing, willing to believe is true before it even happens. Or what you believe is true because it's already happened. It's if so, it will create something new or it will recreate, it will reheat the old. So Thanksgiving dinner was first cooked for a couple of days afterward, it's reheated, right? But it's it's this it's so you're eating the same thing, whether you cooked it or reheated. It. It's the same thing. A thought is either going to create a new thing or it's going to reheat, it's going to keep this thing going in your life. That's all prayer is. It's what you're saying to yourself that you're believing. Meaning, not that you know that you believe it like it's absolute, like I know it's gonna work. No, it's just you keep telling yourself that, and you're like, this is this could this could, this could really happen for me. Like I keep thinking this is happening, like this is going to happen. That's that's all prayer is, right? Uh, Vanessa, go back to the thing, please. The um, slide. Thank you. So this is so this is why it says, therefore, I tell you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, whatever. So when people say, oh, you can't pray for that. You can't ask God for that. Well, that's not what it said. It said, whatever you ask. But asking, do you know what? Asking, what is another word? What what do people take this word to mean? Or how do people apply that word? Ask. Say it again. Begging. That's exactly right. Please, please, please. You like James Brown, Keith Sweat. You doing the whole thing, right? Begging, hoping, wishing. Wishing. That's how most people take that word. That's not it. Leslie, did you ask God if you could if you could make that happen? Did you get like a permission slip first? No. Right. Whatever you ask. That's why I said it, it, like when you read these texts or when you read any text, if something's bolded, if something's repeated, it's it's to get your attention. People are trying to get your attention. That's why you is in here several times. Prayer is only in there once. Whatever is in there once. Believe is in there once. You is in there several times. Because that is the linchpin. That is the thing that has, that's the constant. Is you. You are the constant. So whatever you are doing is what you're getting. Whatever you are thinking is what you're getting. Whatever you are saying is what you're getting. Whatever you're saying is true is what you're getting. This journey is all about you. 
It's all about you. And that's why if you don't know you, if you don't know yourself, you're you're playing with a losing hand already. You could say you're in Vegas. You could say you're at the table. You could say you have chips. You're playing with a losing hand. You just don't know it yet. Or you just haven't put your cards down yet. But that sooner or later, you're going to have to put them cards down. And then it's just official. But you've already lost before you put your cards down. When you don't know who you are, you've already lost. You've already lost. And it's amazing what we know and don't know. It's amazing what we know and don't know. Let's see. Mm, let me have a, let me have a volunteer. Somebody I haven't talked to. Volunteer, volunteer. A volunteer, who's lucky. Perfect. All right. So you are in a room. Okay, you're in that room. Perfect. All right. So the glasses on your face, what are those for? So I can see better. The shirt on you, what is that for? So I'm not naked. Okay. So right. Okay. The computer that you're using, what is that for? To work. Okay. Uh, let's see. And the, the lights behind you, the lighting behind you, what is that for? Um, for aesthetics. Okay. What are you for? <laughs> so, it's a good one. Um, I know it's a good one. And I, why did it take so long? Whatever I want to be. What? Um, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Right. My point. I you, am. Right. So my point to you is, if, if everything in our world, we can look at it and know what it's for, why do we not know what we're for? Why do we know, why do we not know what we're here for? Why do we not know who we are? Everything in the room that we're all in, we can look around and attach a value or a meaning to it. This is what this is. This is what it does. This is what it's for. This is why it's here. Can, can we all say that about ourselves? This is what I am. This is what I'm for. This is why I'm here. This is can can all of us say the same thing about ourselves that we say about all the different things in this in the room you're in right now. It's been repeated to us over and over again, mm -hmm. but no one told us about consciousness and humanity is just to experience what consciousness thinks. We don't hear talk like that. Mm -hmm. So we don't know as a result. Mm -hmm. And that's why, and that's why we're here. And that's why we say the things we say so that we can start drawing attention to that. I would say this too, Coach Lucky, like um, like the brother was saying earlier, um, you know, just taking time to really sit with yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like my experience since coming back to the classes has been um that consciousness awakening almost and i really feel it and it's not even a feeling it's a belief because mm -hmm. i know mm -hmm. the things that i'm doing from here on they're starting to stick they're starting to make more sense because i'm understanding who i am and what i'm for mm -hmm. yes yes I mean, have you have you ever seen someone like have you ever seen a, a bad plumber or a bad electrician, right? And they're just fidgeting through their tools and you could just tell they don't know what they're doing, right? See somebody, you know, or a teacher and they don't really they can't teach, right? And they're just kind of fumbling around the classes out of order, everything is just crazy. Well, uh, when when you don't know who you are and, or and you don't know what the things around you are for, it's just, it's just, it doesn't matter what title you hold. It doesn't matter where you stand. It doesn't matter. None of those things matter because you don't know what this tool is for. You don't know. Knowing is an internal thing. Knowing, gnosis, knowledge is an internal personal thing. Just because you know something I, doesn't mean I know it, right? So it's not by osmosis. It's not that we all know the same things. We don't. So we're all living very individual lives because of our, our knowledge base is very individualized. 
right? And so when you can look around your room and identify everything in your world, what it's for, what it does, why you have it, and what it's doing for you, then you, we should be able to do the same thing for our lives. Everything, every, or meaning, and for our, our personal identity. Who am I? What am I? Why am I? What am I doing? Why am I doing it? For what? And whatever else it is. In order for us to live the lives that we want to live, we have to be able to answer those questions the same way we answer the so-called easy ones, the external ones. We have to be able to answer those internally about our identity, our self-concept, who we believe ourselves to be, who we know ourselves to be, what that means, what that does, what that allows us to do. Is it anything, everything, all things, some things, sometimes, somewhere, when, what, why, where, who, so to speak, right? We have to be able to answer all these things internally. And oftentimes the struggles in our lives come from the fact that we cannot or we do not. We're more familiar with the outside external world than we are with our, with our internal world. And we're trying to live well in the world, not realizing we are the liver, so to speak. And if we don't know who we are as the person living, how do we expect to live well? We are the one that's actually doing it. And we're doing it at the level that we are aware of that we have the knowledge of, just like the plumber can fix the stuff based on their level of awareness or knowledge, right? And the tools they use to fix something, right? So the knowledge that we have and the tools of the world that we use to fix something or be something or do something or have something, whether it's our body, whether it's our relationships, whether it's our money, whether it's our health, whether it's our business, whether it's our children, whether it's whatever it is, right? Those are all the tools that we are using to have an expression they're expressions of our knowledge, right? And when we don't know how, when we don't know who we are, then it skews everything else. It blurs everything else. And we either don't do it at all, don't do it right, or don't do it well, There, it, something is, is not all the way clicking, right? And so the first thing is to get knowledge of self. The first thing is to have an understanding of who you are, what you are, why you are. So just like we look around the areas we're in and we can identify those things, we now, after this call, we all need to sit down and say, let me in all the questions I can answer outside about my environment. I need now I need now to sit down and start getting some, all these same answers about my internal environment. Who am I? What am I? Why am I? Where am I? What does this mean? What do I think about myself or believe I can do or be or have? We need to start becoming clear on that. And just as well as we're clear about what a wrench does or what car keys do, when we become clear about our internal abilities, we'll be able to use those just as well to be able to live the lives that we want to live, right? And that's really the difference between a lot of these things, <clears throat> right? So when it says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Right. So praying is just saying whatever you want to be true now. Like Leslie said, I, we haven't we've we've, you know, kind of have had not the best relationship for a while now. But obviously, but humanity cares about that. Consciousness does not because what consciousness decided when Leslie decided I'm going to change my consciousness, it changed her experience. It, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing something else. It doesn't matter how long there was darkness. When God said, let there be light, there was light and there still is. It doesn't matter how bad your relationships have been for how long. It doesn't matter how bad your health has been for how long. It doesn't matter how long you've been broke. It doesn't matter how long something is not, has not been what you want. It can You can turn it into what you want now if you're willing to take a new thought, if you're willing to pray, if you're willing to say, "I whatever I ask, okay, well, I'm asking this. I am now declaring that this is what it is. I have a great relationship or I have a wonderful business or my business is easy or whatever else it is. If you, if you are willing to entertain that thought and take that thought as your own, then you can actually have, it will be yours. But if you're unwilling to do that, if you're unwilling to do that, it will not be. This is, this is, if you can understand this one kind of verse, this is what consciousness as far as the creation and the maintenance or the elimination, this is really how your world is operating on a day-to-day -day basis. Therefore, I tell you, right? Well, therefore, I tell you, who is this speaking? I am. Yeah. Yeah. 
This is, this is your higher mind talking to your human mind. This is the depth of your being talking to the surface being. Leslie, Cisco, Monique, Latoya. This is the depth of this is who you really are talking to your persona. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask, who are you asking? Leslie, who are you asking? Right? If, if you were just talking to you, then you're only asking you. So that means the speaker and the listener, the requester and the grantor are one. It's one experience. It's one consciousness having an experience. There is no separation between, between, between your conscious mind and your physical expression. Between your consciousness and your physical world. There is no separation. So that is why you can you can ask for whatever you want and believe you have, and it will be you, yours. It will be you. Your consciousness is telling your surface level mind, right? Your physical mind, hey, whatever, whatever you come to me with, I'll do it. This is this is our experience as one. We are one, we're having an experience, internally and externally, like two sides of a coin, so to speak. Night and day, it's still the same day. Just because there's daylight and then there's moonlight, it's still the same day. It just may look different. Right, so this is your higher mind talking to you. This is not me talking to you, this is not your cousin talking to you. And if you look at it, your higher mind said, therefore I tell you, Right? You, 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 and it will be you, yours. So it's not even involving anyone else. It didn't say, it, it didn't say it's not what you know is who you know. It didn't say, well, you got to work twice as hard. It didn't say all the things that humanity has made up and contrived for itself. It didn't say that. And guess what? If you do like Leslie did, meaning, and don't say that either, if you don't go with that either, you're going to get what it said you'll get. It will be yours. If you keep it to yourself, it will be yours. Meaning if you keep it within you, if you realize the agreement, the request and the, and the, and the, the agreement is, is one experience. And if you keep it that way, it's, that's the only thing necessary to get what you want. It doesn't require anyone else's help or support or anything like that. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that your higher mind won't use someone else, but your higher mind is everyone. I am is everyone. Leslie is not everyone. Cisco is not everyone. I am is everyone. So I am knows where, if it needs to go to Cisco to get this thing for itself, Leslie. But I am is Cisco as well. I am is Leslie. So I am is only given to itself, just in a different identity. So it knows who has it. It knows where it is because it's, it's, it's his. Let's give it. It's. I'm sorry. Not. It's. It's. Right. Let me give you an example. Uh, I think it is the fourth slide. I think. So can you go to? Uh, let's see here. It is slide. It is slide. I think it's slide. Um. It's slide two. I think it is. I think it's slide two. Yeah. Um, uh, verse 24, please. Let me show you. All right. So here we go again. So. This is where it's showing you that your higher mind knows where everything is. Right. What does it say? It says, so after Jesus and his disciples arrived in, in Capernaum. Right. All right. So. Jesus represents, right, as we've known, it represents, it represents the mind and flesh that knows who it is, that knows it's in a flesh body, but knows it's still I am. And the disciples are the disciplines, the aspects of mind, all the different aspects of mind that are, 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 that your higher mind trains, right? And so it arrived at Capernaum and the collectors of the, of the temple tax came to Peter and asked, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When Peter came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon, he asked? From whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes from their own children or from, or from others? Will you scroll down a little bit, please? 
Okay, so so they asked they asked Peter a question. And when Peter came into the house, what happened? What happened? Was it Jesus was the first to speak? Okay. Jesus. Okay. All right. All right. Jesus started the conversation. Okay. So what does that mean? He already knew what, was, what had happened. He, how did he know? Was he so there? He is the great I am. Right. So then who are you? So if okay. right, so if Jesus was the first to speak, you said he he already knew. Then why don't you know? Why don't you know what you need to know? Right, Jesus was the first to speak, and not only was the first to speak, he told him, "What do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes? From their own children or from others?" So he knew and knew enough to ask him a question. He knew that power is in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So if that same power that is that they're writing about in this book is in you, then let's just say it this way. How come you're not the first to speak? Why are we walking around in the unknown? Like we're in the dark with a blindfold on. Why don't we know? Because we don't go within. We don't spend any time there. Christ is with. Christ is in you. The hope of glory. The kingdom of heaven is in you. What is? How is Christ defined in the in the in the in the New Testament as the power and the wisdom of God? The power and the wisdom of I am. The power and wisdom of consciousness. Your consciousness has power and wisdom. But not if you don't ask it. Not if you don't talk to it, not if you don't spend any time with it. It that you don't have a relationship, even though you're connected, you don't have a relationship. Right? Okay, go back to the slide, please. And that's not even the part I was talking about. But we're gonna go back to it, right? Okay. So then it says the children are exempt. Jesus said to him, but so that we may not cause offense, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first pitch you catch, open its mouth, and you will find a four drachma coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. So what happened? What is this paragraph saying? He said that even though the children are exempt, we still gonna go pay the tax so we don't cause no offense. Okay. Like the uh, you have to. I think it says like you have to go with the law of the land. That's one of the. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can go with the law of the land, but what if you don't have any money? But he provided. God provided. Like you said, go go fish, and once you get that fish, I got I got tax for me and you. Right. But but look at look at what it said. Like, look at it. Look at verse. Look at verse from go to the lake in verse 27. Look at from go to the lake and all the way to the, until until the until the end of that 27th verse, all the way to the end of the drachma coin. Where it says you will find a four drachma coin. Right. Look at what it's saying right there. Take the first fish you can't. Open his mouth. What is that telling you? Hmm. What is that telling us? Somebody say something. Go look. You have to be uh, I'm trying to think. I'm. I'm. Oh, I don't think I'm overthinking. Just okay. But, um, you have to go for knowledge. Find the knowledge, and once you go look, once you stay curious and go look for the what I told you to go look for, you will be. Um, be given what you need to to get it, you know. Okay. All right. Who else? Yeah. 
that you're being provided for. And all you have to do is just follow what I'm putting in you. Okay. Who else? Who else? Well, I'm just getting on, but it, it looked like when, when Jesus said go, when the great I am says go, and he gives specific instructions. Stop, 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 stop. You said two you said, words. What were the two words you said? Specific instructions. Specific instructions. What does it take to give someone specific instructions? Knowledge. 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 Not belief, knowledge. 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 Look at the specificity here. You wonder why, so Cisco, we were talking earlier in the earlier class and we talked about like, you know, how do I feel something I never felt before? You know, think, you know, the things that we talked about earlier, right? How do I know how something feels that I've never done or whatever else it is? Your awareness, this awareness in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory, understands exactly what you mean when you say what you say. The power and wisdom of your consciousness is not, is not listening to your words as in vocabulary. It's listening to the intentions that your words are attempting to describe. Your words don't validate you. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, sometimes we're like, Oh man, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to describe how I feel. You know how you feel. You're trying to find words to describe it, but you know how you feel. How, because how you feel is for you. You're trying to find words to describe it to explain to someone else who doesn't feel what you feel. But you know what you feel. If you and your human mind know what you feel, you think your higher mind doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's the one that's saying, go to the lake. It told you where to go. It told you to throw your line out. It told you to take the first fish, not the second one, not the third one, not just one. It told you to open his mouth and it told you how much you would find in there. Mm. How much more do you need to know? How much more help do you need? Does anybody need any more help than that? No. Was no. the money they took out of the fish sufficient for the, for the, person who said it and the person who was going to get it. Was it enough? Did they get enough? Yes. So what else do you need? Nothing. You just need to go. So then why don't you have enough? In whatever life, whatever. Why don't you have enough? Then? Enough money, enough time, enough joy, enough peace, enough. Why not? Why not? Because you don't know yourself. You don't know that that's who you are. That's correct. What does it say? Let that mind that's in Christ be also in you. You're supposed to think the same way. You're supposed to have the same, you're supposed to have the same awareness of your resources, knowing that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Yes, I've been saying that all day. Right? You're supposed to say, you're supposed to, I'm, I'll am i speak first, I know. You're supposed to have that level of awareness where you know, you can perceive, you know what's happening in your world around you. But what did this mind always say? I and my father are one. The awareness I have and the life I live are one. They're not two, they're not three, it's not optional, it's not religious, it's not spiritual, it's not deep, it's just the truth. This mind knew where its resources were. This mind was the first one to speak and it wasn't even on the scene when the guy was talking to Peter. So if you are going within yourself, if you are seeking first, the kingdom of God and its righteousness, the kingdom, right, in you, kingdom of heaven is in you and its righteousness. If you are thinking about yourself the way you should be, as far as I am thinking that I am the person I want to be, 
I'm thinking as the person who wants, who, who is what they want, whether it's to be something, do something, or have something. When you are thinking of yourself that way, that is called righteousness. When you're thinking of yourself as the person you don't want to be, that is a sin. Meaning, sin means error. It means you have missed the mark. It's an error in thought. It's not moral or ethical. Righteousness is not moral or ethical. It's a choice. I can think of myself as I desire to be, or I can think of myself as I don't desire to be. I can think of myself as I am. I can think of myself as I am not. I can think of, I can believe I have received, or I can believe I won't receive. But it was you. Either way it goes. You're the comp you are doing all these things. Believing, not believing, being, not being, having, not having. You are the linchpin. You are the kingpin. You are the centerpiece around which all this revolves. Yeah. It's telling the, the level of specificity of the power and wisdom in you will 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 blow your human mind. What do you think Peter thought? When he told him to do that, what do you think Peter thought when he went and it actually worked? Oh, snap. But what do we always say in class? It's that was an opportunity to exercise its authority. That mind took the opportunity to show you, okay, let me show you what I got. Let me show you how this works. Thank you. Let me show you how this works. So in case you had any doubt, in case you thought like I was just up here, you know, like I was just over here just saying, everybody follow me. Let me show you how this works. He took the opportunity to show Peter how to do something, how to get a need met for himself and for the people around him. You can meet your need and the people of those around you. That same mind is supposed to be in you. If the same mind is in you, can't you do the same thing? Isn't that the reason of, isn't that the whole point of having the mind? To having the same mind is to be able to perform the same way. So when you when you occupy this state of mind, then you under, then you understand that everything is yours and you have access to all the resources. And so now all you do is like Leslie did, you pray. Meaning all you do is like Leslie did, you start talking to yourself as the, like the person who has what they want. Whatever area of life that is, you start talking to yourself like that, like you have what you want. It doesn't matter that you didn't have it. It doesn't matter how long ago you've been without it or that you've never had it. That has no, your higher mind, your the depth of your being, your true self doesn't care about any of that. Humanity cares about all that. That's That's... But but when you when you start praying, now grown folks are talking. Praying is grown folks talk. But grown folks say stupid stuff too. Like I ain't got it. I'll never get it. I gotta work twice as hard. You don't understand. I gotta be this. You gotta okay, well, grown folks say stupid stuff too. But grown folks are talking, meaning there's consequences coming now. There's outcomes that are happening or not happening. Things are happening now when grown folk talk. When kids talk, oh, yeah, you going to the party? Yeah, I'm going. Well, how do you know? Oh, well, I got to go ask my mom. Well, then how are you going to tell me you going if you got to ask your mom still? Because you're not grown. You don't have the final say. You can ask for what you like, but you don't have the final say. You would, you're better off saying, I would like to go. I hope I can go. Don't act like you going. You don't, you don't, you don't have it like that, right? But when you're now going within, when you're having a conversation within yourself, that's grown folks talking now. Now, whatever you desire, whatever you desire, whatever you ask for when you pray, we're not, we're not talking begging, whatever you ask for. So when you're complaining, I don't have enough money, I can't ever do this, you're praying. You're praying, it's the same thing. Just because you're saying I don't doesn't mean you're not. Just because you're saying I don't have doesn't mean you're not praying. You're just praying not to have. It's very simple. You're just praying. You are praying, though. Whatever. It says whatever. Whatever. 
that's a very important word, whatever. So when you're saying, I don't got it, I can't have it, I'll never get it, nobody this, or I won't, or I can't, or this, okay. Okay. Right? So understand that. Okay. Let's go to, mm, let's go to, uh, which one do I want? Um, let's go to, uh, the, I think I want to go to the first slide. Oh, no, 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 not the first slide. Uh, let's go to the, to the third slide. All right. So, um, yeah. Okay, so, okay, will you go up a little bit, please, to the top? Uh, I think I'm going to change the version. Um, will you go to the, I guess, the new King James one? Yeah. All right, so now, right, perfect. All right. So, on the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And then go down a little bit, please. And in verse 39, he said, then he arose, then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm, right? But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the winds, even the wind and the sea obey him? All right. So the winds and waves are happening. They're panicking. He's sleeping. They wake him up. Okay, so notice what they said. They woke up and they said to him, teacher, teacher. Same thing as master, teacher. That's what the bedroom, that's what the master bedroom is named after, is a teacher. It's a teacher's room. Back in the day, most, most schools were almost like most of the old, old schools were almost like boarding schools. So kids were sent away to school. And the, and the teacher, the master bedroom was the only room that had a bathroom attached to it. Everyone else had a hall bathroom. There was a communal bathroom. The teacher, the master bedroom, the teacher's room had a bathroom attached to it. That's why it's called the master bedroom. So master or teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? So they made a state, an absolute statement. We are perishing. Then he arose and uh, then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea said, "Peace be still." And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. All right, what is so right there? What does that tell you? So right now he's already got some money stashed away and he found that. Now what does this tell you? In verse thirty-nine, what does it tell you? What is it saying? Yeah, I think it was like like Jesus saying, like yeah, I'm, I, evidently Jesus was chilling. And he wasn't, he wasn't fearful. So he was like, why y'all fearful when y'all riding with me? Mm -hmm. Well, then why are you afraid when you're riding with I am? I think it'd be that uncertainty because we feel like we don't know. Isn't that what they said? Mm -hmm. Do you not care that we are perishing? See, when you learn how to read this stuff, you, you're able to put it in your, into, your own, into your own life. We're able to put it into our own lives first person. Why do we fear? Why do, why do we fear when we're rolling with the teacher? They said we are perishing, but he was in a stern asleep on a pillow and they awoke him. So they're dying and he's sleeping. How could that, po how could that be possible in the same place at the same time? Because they judged the situation. Based on what? based on what they thought was happening instead of judging the situation based on 
Um, and well, they judge the situation, saying it's a bad thing that this is happening. Based on what? Based on their knowledge of what? The way life has been going so far. When they come in, if water is getting in the boat, then you know you you about to sink. So Based they, on the way life is going for them. Them. There's, based there's, on the experience mm -hmm. based on who you are mm -hmm. based on the way your life is going for you you are either asleep or you are perishing <laughs> the facts so that's it your your perception wow. is your perception so what's the famous question in class who are you that determines whether you are asleep when the winds and waves are beating or whether you're perishing. The perception, the perception didn't change the circumstances. The perception is what allowed is is based on is based on the person. And that and one person said the circumstances don't awaken me. They don't, they don't make me rise. They don't get a rise out of me. They don't rattle me. Ooh. When you don't know who you are, which is where the disciples are, that's where that word came from. Like we all talk about discipline, disciples. It means to be taught daily. That is when you don't have the aspects of your mind disciplined, the, at the 12 disciplines of your mind, the 12 mm -hmm. aspects of your mind, when you don't have those disciplines, when the winds and waves of life beat on you, when, when there's COVID, when there's recession, when bread is up 33%, gas is up 26%, when rent is high, food is high, wages are low, when all those things are happening, you're going to say, God, don't you care that I'm perishing? Don't you see me starving? Don't you see me dying? Don't you see me living check to check? Don't you see me? But the teacher is with you. The teacher is in the same boat. I am is with you. I am is not somewhere else. I am is not something else. I am is sitting right there with you. But it doesn't see the winds and waves as capable of doing that. So it can sleep. What if you could, what if your kids were at home and you couldn't sleep because they made too much noise? Or you couldn't sleep because you were afraid of what they were going to do to you? Do you know how insane that would be? Well, when you when, when you make the winds and waves, aren't you the parent? Mm. Did you make the winds and the waves? So you mean to tell me the thing you made is now going to make you perish? That's what you're saying to me? Not in your right mind? You're going to come out that door and be like, listen. <laughs> uh, right? And, and the winds and waves become peaceful and still. Do they not? <laughs> so what is, what is the difference between your kids? and your body, or your money, or your business, or anything, your relationships, what's the difference? They're all, they're all you, they're all yours, they're all expressions of you, right? It would be your spouse, it would be your money, it would be your body, it would be your kids. They're, they are things that are physical expressions of you. You made them, so how do you not be able to control them? Well, you're not able to control them if you try to control them while you're out of control. Ooh. When you're out of control, you go from Jesus to disciple or God knows lower than that. And now you're fighting with the circumstances of life. And then you end up feeling like we're surely going to perish. We are absolutely going to die. Now, you also have to keep in the back of your mind or we'll bring it up to the front that at least half of the disciples or at least probably about a third of the disciples were fishermen by trade and their families were fishermen. So when they're telling you these winds and waves are beating and they were born on the water, essentially, and lived in water cities, do you know how bad that must have been for them to say we're going to die? And how could it be that bad and somebody on there snoring with their mouth? You, you can't make it up. There's no way you can have that difference of an experience and be thinking the same way. That different of that different perception. You can't think that differently if you don't think that differently. You can't see things that differently if you, unless you literally think that differently. So it's not a physical thing we're talking about. The way you see the world is not because you're black. It's not because you're a woman. It's because of how you see you. 
And if you define yourself as black, or you define yourself primarily as a woman, or you define yourself, if you define yourself primarily by your physical attributes, you are going to perish. It's only a matter of time. It'll get you. It'll catch you. Because now you have to pledge allegiance to it. Now you have to defend it. Now you got to protect it. Now you got to go march for it. Now you got to go do all these other things. Not because you want to, but because you need to. Because your what you attach your identity to is now your salvation. You got to march because if you don't, it's all bad. You got to vote because if you don't, it's all bad for you. Half most of the things we do are not because we want to, it's because we need to. We are believing that this is our salvation. It's our saving grace. There's nothing wrong with voting. Nothing wrong with saying you're a woman. But if you think that's really going to save your life or make it better for you, you are in, you are in for a long ride, buddy. You're going to find out swiftly that it's not the case. Your physical body, your physical world is a reflection of you. You created it. It can't save you. You created that boat. They created the boat they were in too. Huh. The boat wasn't going to save them. The physical things you create are, thing, are your tools for you to express yourself with. They're not your savior. They couldn't make themselves. You made it. So you have to understand that the things you made can only do so much for you. And everything they can do for you, guess what? A wrench can't do anything for you if you don't pick it up. So you still got to do that. They can't do anything for you, right? Your car can't do anything for you if you don't drive it. You still got to do that. So attaching our value, attaching our safety, our protection, our identity to things that can't do anything for us without our help, what kind of thing is that? <laughs> you, might as well, you might as well go to the graveyard and marry a dead person. They're going to do as much for you as that wrench if you don't pick it up and use it. it's Right? They're both going to be sitting right where you left them. They're both going to be sitting right where you left them last. They, I promise you they're not going to move. I promise. You might as well go on and go to the court and get you a wrench. Be like, you know what? We, you know, we're real good together. Me and this highlighter, we're real together. I think we got something going. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Well, what's the difference? What's the difference? What are we talking about? And it's no sillier than what, what, we're, what we're doing with all these other things. When you're worshiping your skin color, when you're worshiping your gender, when you're worshiping your political affiliation, when you're worshiping your job, when you're worshiping your salary, when you're worshiping your eyelids and you're worshiping your whatever else, Whatever you're worshiping in the physical world that you created is not designed for that to be done, and it cannot help you no matter how much you worship. It can't do anything for you until you do something with it. So you're still doing the work, and you're giving it all the credit. Right? Okay, go back to the slide, please. I want you guys to see something else. So... They rebuked the wind and he said to him, peace, be still. Okay, so when they said that from in verse 39, what, what, else, what else is happening in verse 39? What's the, what, did, what do you get from that? From the other thing, you got the coins. What did you get from this, from verse 39? That he put it in this place. Like you said, this is under my command. So I'm putting you in your place and now that's it. And it was a great calm. So the thing that he created now has to be under his submission. Correct. It's under his submission. So that That's means within you, rebuke. within you then, is the is the is the power to calm the winds and the waves of your life, to tell the winds and the waves to peace, be still, the circumstances, the situations, whether you want to call them people, bills, health, jobs, whatever else it is. You, within you is the power to put those things under your feet, under submission, to say, peace, be still. You're talking to your mind, peace, be still. And, the, and your mind will come under a great calm. It will calm down. But you're the authority. It's waiting on you. And the, so you have, in you is the power. And with the coins is the wisdom. I know what I have. I know where it is, 
how much is in there, which one to get, and it's enough for both of us. Within you, and within you is the consciousness, the level of consciousness that you can apply and act and employ in your life, knowing that's who you really are. You are the word made flesh, just like Jesus. That's all Jesus represents is the word made flesh, is consciousness having a physical expression. That's all you are. And what does it say that that mind think just like this person? And you will tell all the circumstances in your life that are, hmm. that are rising up and causing hell and chaos in your life to stop it off. Stop it and knock it off. Just to stop it off. You can tell it that's it. That's enough. Within you is the wisdom to know that you have every resource available to you to pay taxes, to calm the winds and the waves, to walk on water, to turn water into wine, and whatever else it is. Within you, where did Jesus go? When they came to Jesus, where did Jesus go? He was there. Yeah. The okay. Time. And who did Jesus call? Nobody. So then where do you need to go? Nowhere. Who do you need to call? Nobody. In your genuine voice. So what we're saying here is that in you is the power and the wisdom to deal with all the things of life. And that power and that wisdom, right? You going to your to the depth of your being, to your higher mind and saying, this is what I want. This is how I, this, I want this thing dealt with. I need to pay something, buy something, stop something, calm something, get something, let something go. It's in you. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to call anyone. You don't have to go outside and tell everyone. Within you is the hope of glory. Within you is the kingdom of heaven. Within you, what does it say? Seek first. That's why he didn't go anywhere. That's why he didn't go out calling anybody. Seek first. But guess what? When somebody comes to you for taxes, so to speak, when the winds and waves rise up in life, guess what? You got to know who you are. And you got to be ready. So you can't turn to Jesus in five seconds. Even though you are, you can't turn, you, your mind won't click on that fast. You, your human mind will just argue with you all the time. You haven't practiced that. You don't know that person. You know of that person, but you don't know that about yourself. You've heard it may be true. You've heard, you've heard a little something about that. You've been to a couple classes. But when it's game time, when it's go time, when it's waves time, when it's tax time. What if Jesus was like, man, uh, I ain't got it. What if Jesus was in the boat like, mayday, mayday. Jumped out the boat and was like, you on your own. Jumped out the boat and started walking on the water just for himself. Did you notice, did you notice the commonality in both of those stories? Jesus helped more than himself. The taxes he paid for me and you, right? When he saw those winds and waves, when he told him to peace be still, he wasn't the only one on the boat that was, he wasn't the only one on the boat. This is how you can make a difference when you know who you are. All of you want to donate and give back to the world and make a difference in the world. You have to do that by first knowing who you are. You have to start there. It's easy to create a nonprofit. It's easy to start giving some turkeys away on Thanksgiving. It's easy to, but it's, it's, it's a different story to calm your mind. It's a different story to be able to talk to yourself and say, peace, be still. That's, that's, a, that's a different power. That's a different thing. You can't just go sign up for that. There's nobody on the outside that can help you be that. You have to do that on your own. You have to sit down and go within yourself and say, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to be. This is what I want to have. 
This is how I'm going to see myself. This is how I'm going to talk to myself over and over and over and over until I go from a disciple to Christ. Till I go from being taught to being the teacher. You have to rise up in the ranks of your mind. Just like you do in school, just like you do in a sport, right? Just like you do at work. You have to rise up the levels of consciousness in your mind, increasingly aware of who you really are. So within you is the power to financially help save yourself and, the, and you is the power and the wisdom to literally save lives, literally. Right? Will you go to that third or that next slide? I think it's the last one. This is the third one. The fourth one, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. So now here's the last one. So after this, there was a Jewish feast. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate, right? The Sheep Gate is basically when you're, when you're your consciousness, when it, when you are going into the depth of your consciousness. Sheep represent like your dreams and stuff like that. A pool called Bethesda, with Bethesda, and and, uh, and we say Aramaic, Aramaic doesn't matter. Which has five covered walkways. Do you know what those five covered walkways represent? The five senses. The five senses. That's what but that, that's what Bethesda means. It means five senses, five fingers. And it's a it's a it's a metaphysical way, it's kind of a hidden way of saying five. It's talking about your five senses. A great number of sick, blind, lame, and paralyzed people were lying in these walkways. Now, a man who had been disabled for 38 years, now a man who was there was had been disabled for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, and when Jesus saw him lying there, and when he realized the man, that the man had been disabled a long time already, well, how did he realize the man had been disabled that long? Did somebody tell him? How did he know, how did he realize that the man had been disabled a long time already? One, because he's the I am. And two, because the physical appearance of him, he's just been there. Yeah, but it, it didn't say, he said he, but he realized he had been disabled a long time already. So him just being there, but he doesn't know how long, he doesn't know when he got there. No one told him. He doesn't know how long he was disabled before he got there. He doesn't know how he even got there. So to your first, so so how does he know? Because he knows all. Okay, how does he know? He came to a realization, like he maybe got, he had a download from God and let him know. How does he know? Because he is the I He's am. the creator. Because he's consciousness. He knows everything. Yeah, that's true. Because he is him? Because he is him. Mm, that's good. Because he's him. Jesus is you in your downtrodden state. You're still you. Do you remember that book we read a couple months ago when the, when uh, when they were talking about the number two? and the value of the number, and that whether a 40-year-old writes the number two or whether a two-year-old writes the number two, it does not change the value of the number. It just, may change the, it just may change the way the number looks, but the value is not less. Does anybody remember that? Yeah. It's the same thing. You may, you may, you may look like a shriveled up number two, like a two-year-old wrote it. But you're still, your value is still the same. You're still Christ. You're still the word made flesh. 
But when you forget that, something else can happen to you. But it still doesn't change who you really are. It just cha may change the way you look, but it doesn't change who you are. It may change your symbol, the way the number two looks. If a 30-year-old writes it, it looks much better than if a three-year-old writes it. That's true. But as long as we can both ascertain that that number is two, the value, when we agree that that's the same number, no matter how it looks, when we agree that that's the same number, the value is not based on the way it looks. The value is based on what it is. And what it is and what it looks like are not the same thing. The value is the value. What it looks like doesn't is not is true but that's his, that's his own experience i can change what it looks like if i return to my value i can be re restored to my glory as the prodigal son when i come back home right so the so that is why he realized because i am is him i am is you it's not Jesus and this other person. It's not Jesus in this other. Jesus personifies your consciousness in humanity, still retaining the memory and the knowledge that I am. I am still the being I was before I got in his body. I'm still that. That's what Jesus represents. All these other people are people who are a step, an inch, or 50 miles away from that awareness, working their way back steadily, step by step by step, to their original awareness of who they are. That is what's going to happen to all of us. Step by step by step, we are going to return to where we came from, the awareness of who we are. So that's how he knows. That is how he knew uh, the guy what the guy was saying about the coins. That's how he knew what to say to Peter first, because I am is Peter. I am is the coin guy. I am is the paralyzed guy. I am is everyone. But when you attach paralysis, you're now saying I am as aware of being paralyzed. I am as aware of being stuck. I am as aware of, of, a, of a consciousness lower than its nature. Just like people wouldn't call paralysis normal, right? Same thing. It's common, it's normalized, we try to work with it, but it's not the ideal. But it's still, I am. So now the figure can be disfigured, but the value never changes in consciousness. That's why anything can be restored in consciousness. Because the value never changes. The figure might, it may become disfigured. It may look like a three-year-old wrote it. But as long as we all look at this number and agree that it's number two, well, when we all look at something and agree that this is what it is, then now it's not based on what it looks like. It's we treat it as it is. And that is how Jesus healed everybody. But it wasn't him that was doing it. What did he say? It's not me that does the work. It's my father in me. So the reason that your consciousness can do that is because when you are willing to see yourself as your true value and not your disfigurement or your dismember, dismemberment, not your disgust or your disillusion or your disenchantment or your disenfranchisement or whatever other dis there is, any other separation from your true nature, when you are willing to see yourself as your true value, this is what's going to happen to you. Your higher mind, right? He, he's, he, your higher mind will say to you, do you want to become well? Your higher mind asks you a question. Do you want to become well? Do you want to become rich? Do you want to become happy? Do you want to become successful? Do you, your higher mind is always asking, do you want to become? When it's, so when, you're, when your higher mind is asking you, do you want to become? What is a word for that? Do you want to be? What is a word for that? Manifest. What is it? No. Nope. What is a word for that? Realize. What are you realizing? Realize. 
acknowledge? What do you identity? acknowledge? I'm sorry. Is it the identity? Identity? What what shapes your identity? Who you say you are? And who, who you and believe, you, who you believe okay. yourself to be? Okay. And what and what do you how do you choose that? State you're in. State decide. You're in. How do you choose? How do you decide? What are you deciding? What state are you in? By the thoughts that we think that are what true, thought? at least. What, okay, but if you if if it says, do you want to become white? Right? In this case, do you want to become well? Right. A work, a work when when it's saying that it's it's it says that's what a desire is. Mm. That's what an idea is. Mm, it, do right. you want to become? Do you want to become the person in this case? Who is well? Do you want to become the, when you want to be a millionaire, do you want to become the person who is a millionaire? Do you want to become aware of being this? Do you want to become well in this case? But well, swap that out for anything that you would want to become. But what does it say? What is the sentence? It's, it's highlighted. So somebody read it again, right there was highlighted. What does it say? Do you want to become well? What is it not saying? What is it not asking you? How? Okay, that's pretty good. But if it's not asking you how, why wouldn't it ask you how? Because as long as you want it, you can have it. Okay, but yeah, but there's a, yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah, yeah but no, that ain't good enough. No, no we don't, we don't know it how. Need, it doesn't need you to know. Why doesn't it need you to know? Because I am knows. It knows what? It Your knows what diet. you need. It, it knows, wait, hold on. It knows what? It knows what you need. Okay. Who else? Because it created you. Okay. So if it created you, what does it know it that you don't know? Huh? It knows who you really are. And what I, is that? I am. Nope. In this sentence, it knows who you well. really are. What is that? Well, no, you're well. well. It knows you're well. It's, it doesn't say, do you want to be well? It already sees you as well. The becoming is for humanity. Mm. Being is conscious. You, that's why you have to be before you become. The sick man, well, what is a man? What is a man? The human, the flesh? No. What is a man? The identity of the person. So what is the identity? He's sick. Where? In his mind. In his mind. Do you want to become well? He didn't ask, do you want to be well? He already sees you as well. He's turning you. He needs your permission to turn you into into how he already sees you. He sees you as disfigured, but not, but that doesn't lower your value. Your value is not lowered because your, your physical body is not your value. Your physical body is not you. The sick mind answer, and how do you know? I have no one to put me in the pool while I am trying, because everybody loves to say I'm trying. Humanity tries, God does, you gotta pick. Like, 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 this is not like fourth grade little league where whether you win the game by four or you lose the game by 85, everybody sits around and eats juice and drinks juice boxes after the game. And so it was a good try. No, this, this is not that type of party. You either do or you don't. There is no try. You do or you don't. Do you want to become well? Not do you want to be well. I already see you as that. So all I'm going to turn you into, all I'm going to do is turn you into physically what I already see you as. But that's why I can turn you into that physically because that's how I see you. I see you. Your higher mind sees you as eight-figure Cisco or whatever figure you want to attach or whatever life you want to live. I am can, already sees you that way. But it's asking you, do you want to become that? 
And you have to make sure your mind is healthy so that you don't answer with a sick mind and say, I have no one. What did the sick mind do? The sick mind went out. It went outside and said, I have no one. What did Leslie do? She talked, she spoke, to, she talked to herself. Jesus talked to the winds itself. Jesus said, go, Jesus said, go get the thing. It talked to the fish itself, meaning it knew where its resource. It didn't need anybody else. It didn't need, hey, you know, go get that for me. Cool. But it didn't ask him, hey, do you think you can help me out? I'm not saying, let me back up and be clear. I'm not saying you can't ask people for things. Can you get me something to drink? Can you pick me up from work? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying to be what you want to become well, that is an inside job. To be what you want to be in life is an inside job. And your higher mind will locate the fish, will calm the winds and waves. It knows how to deal with the physical world in order to make sure you get what it is that you become, that you have whatever you become. But in order to become, you have to first be. And the reason you are not is because your mind is sick. And your mind is sick because you, and, and as a result, your mind is sick because you, and, your mind, and because your mind is sick, you say, I have no one. You go to someone else. No one. You go outside of yourself. The sick mind goes outside of itself. And when it goes outside of itself, all it does is reinforce the sickness. It goes outside to become sick, and, and, it's, and, it, goes, and it stays outside to become sick. Well, because guess what? When, it's try, when, it, when, it, when, it, when it wants to be healed, what does it say? While I am trying to get into the water. See, our natural human inclination is to go out and be like, oh, yeah, I need to go do this. I need to go do this. I need to go do this. Well, how'd that work? Been out. He been now a man who was there who had been disabled for 38 years. He was outside for 38 years. He went out. He went out to make it happen. He's been lying there a long time already. He was out there. Remember the people on the boat when they fished all night and caught nothing? They were out there. Do you want to become well? The sick mind looks outside. The sick mind looks outside. It goes out and chases things like a cat with a ball of yarn, like a dog with a ball, like a two-year-old chasing a car into the street. The immature mind chases things. Salvation, your higher mind now attached to your human mind because your human mind says, this is what I want you to put on for me. This is what I want you to cook up. Does what? It gets into the water. When your mind is thinking properly, you go in. When it's not, you go out. Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool. Oh, I'm I'm black. Oh, I'm not I'm not a Republican. Oh, I'm not a Democrat. Oh, you got to work twice as hard. Oh, you got to know somebody if you got to. Oh, oh. Well, that's why you're paralyzed. That's why you are where you are. That's why you're staying where you're staying. How you stand? You're gonna remain as you are. Your body is paralyzed when it when it has a sick mind. When his mind is not healthy, the body can't be healthy. The body is only the physical expression of the mind. I have no one to give me money to do this, to do that. Will you put the slide back up, please? I have no money. I can't do this. I can't do that. Thank you. And then what did the mind who said, do you want to become well? After it did all that, the, the healthy mind asked the sick mind, do you want to become well? The sick mind went all off into all the stuff that you go off into. I can't, I can't, I, 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 and everything else. And then what did the, what did the mind who's healthy say? What did it say? Somebody read it. Verse eight. What did it say? What did the mind say? Jesus said to him, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Perfect. Did the mind get in all that confusion with you? 
the, the mind go back and forth? Be like, man, I know it's hard out here, huh? Man, I know, man, you seen these gas prices? You seen them? Man, man, I went to the store the other day, man, that meat. Man, I had to, shoot, I had to. Did it do all that? Did it, did it stand around and agree with you? Did it sit around and try to get on your level? Did it sit around and try to figure out how you feel? No, but you got to listen to how I feel. You don't know how I feel. Why do I care how you feel? You laying here. Why do you keep caring how you feel? Is that helping? That mind said, stand up. So what's the first thing you have to do? Stand up. How do you do that? Decide. Essentially by doing what? Remembering who you are. And if you remember who you are, what do you do? Choose. You dismiss what you know. Say it, again. Say it again. Say it again. If you know who you are, if you remember who you are, then you can't be two different people at the same time. Right. So you got to let something else go. Right. Can't serve two masters. Right. So your human mind says, I have no one. Your human mind goes out and says, I have no one. No one is outside of itself. Right. Your higher mind goes into the water. Your higher mind's always going in. So you got to go within. And and that is how you stand up. You choose a different, you choose a different conception of yourself. You remember and remind who, re remember who you are, remind yourself of who you are. That is standing up. That is a consciousness shift or change. You have to shift your consciousness, your awareness of being before you can do any physical thing called picking up your mat and walking. When you stand up, immediately the man was healed. And he picked up his mat and started walking. So healing is what? Immediate. Because because it is what? That's right. Because it's what? A choice. It's what? A choice. Because it's within. It's it's ours to have. It's a consciousness. It's mm -hmm. I am. When is I am? Now. Now. Isn't that immediate enough? Mm -hmm. So when you say I am healed, that's standing up. When you say I am whatever I want to be, that is standing up. When you say I have whatever I want, that is standing up. When you say things are the way I want them to be, that is standing up. You cannot and you will not pick up your mat or walk before you stand up. And you will not stand up until you say to yourself, I am that which I desire to be, do, or have. That this is the order. Standing up. Picking, walking. Well, I'm going to make money in my business in two to five years. Is that immediate? Hello? No. Is that, is that immediate? No. no. So then, are you, then obviously you have not stood up. Maybe you're a three, maybe you're six weeks old and you just rolling around. Maybe you just on your back still, but you haven't stood up. Mm -hmm. Immediate. Who got two to five years? Is this a jail sentence or a job? What is mm. it? How long can you wait? Stand up if you want to get paid. Stand up if you want a relationship. Stand up if you want to be helped. Stand up if you want to be happy. Stand up. And the only way you can stand up is by going into the water, your, the truth, yourself.
If you don't go in, you're not standing up. If you're not standing up, you're not picking nothing up and walking and immediately will not be exist for you, except maybe in the opposite. You'll be immediately sad, immediately destitute. This is the way it is. This is what it is. If you want more than what you have, you have to go inside. And when you go inside, your higher mind knows where all the fish are. So it's not saying that you don't go fishing. It's not saying that you may not call somebody. It's not saying that you may not run into somebody. It's, may not, it's not saying that you won't market or advertise. It's not saying that you won't use the physical world, but you'll use the physical world as your higher mind and not your lower mind. As your higher mind that knows that there's fish out here in this lake and which one to get. As your higher mind that tells the peace, that tells the winds and waves to just chill, man, stop it, knock it off right now. That knows, that tells your, that, that tells your, or ask your, your human mind, do you want to become? Well, rich, happy, healthy, safe, whatever it may be. The only way, the only way up is in. Yeah. You want to go up? You better go in. If you go out, you will go down. All right. Questions, answers, comments. I, I, when you were talking, I realized that I am is now, but the the time constraints that we put on ourselves or allow is because of others' experience or how long they came took to come to themselves. So because it took them two years to come to themselves, they say, oh, it takes two years mm -hmm. to make this happen. Mm -hmm. But if a lot of times when you're hearing them tell their story, once they made the decision, it happened almost immediately, but it took them two years to come to themselves. Mm -hmm. But then they tell us, oh, it takes two years. Mm -hmm. So that's how we kind of mm -hmm. grapple with, mm -hmm. that's the time. It takes two years to do this, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. It's happening now. Mm -hmm right now mm -hmm. and the more you get used to telling yourself that you'll see it's true because you're telling yourself something else is two to five years and doesn't end up being true mm -hmm. so then what's the difference between telling yourself one thing or telling yourself something else if whatever you tell yourself is true is true why wouldn't you take immediate instead of two to five ask somebody if you went to the judge and the judge said i'm gonna give you two to five years in jail or i'll let you out immediately which one would you pick why would you pick two to five in your right mind? You'd be like, no, you did. No, you know what? I want to do the right thing. I want to do two to five years because isn't that what you did? Isn't that the time? You know, I'm going to do two to five years because fair is fair. Right. right is right. Is that what you're going? Is that what you would say? The judge would be like, okay, you don't even need jail. We need to put you in some kind of psychiatric ward. You need a mental hospital. Asylum. <laughs> yes. You need like lock, lock, lock this person all the way up. Why would you do a two to five year bid when you can get immediate? I didn't write it. I'm just, I read it just like all of you. I didn't write it. I read it. It said, when you stand up immediately. So why we're going with the two to five year bid. Yeah, that's on you. I, I'm not really into that. Like I'm not really into that. So yes, that's exactly right. Immediately. He was healed immediately, healed, not in stages, not in phases, not, well, you know what? Well, let's go on and get you a wheelchair. That's just, just like you're saying, humanity puts all these conditions. Up. Well, you know, you can't go from this to that. Why not? He was healed. He stood up. If you went from paralyzed to standing up, that doesn't look like an in-between to me. Mm -mm. Well, then why do we have to go two to five years? Why do we have to just make a little bit at a time and a little bit of time, and a little bit of the money, and we're going to make a little bit and a little bit before you know it? It won't be before I know it. I know I don't got what I want today. I know that right now. It's not before I know it. It's not. What do you mean? I'm aware right now. 
It's not, be I know it, I know it, I know it. So it ain't before I know it, so I know it. So if it's not before I know it and I know it, can I have it now? <laughs> and it, right, like, what are we talking about? What are, it's to your, it's what we accept because we sit there and we listen to people who have something we want and we think that we have to do it the same way they did it because we think if we're listening and we're following that we're doing it right. And Veronica says this a lot where people don't really realize that people are just telling you their experiences. Mm -hmm. and they're talking to you from where they are. But to your point now, there. but it doesn't mean that you have to have their experiences. It doesn't mean you had to wait that long to believe in yourself or you had to wait that, you don't know how long it took for them to go inside themselves and say, they're just mm -hmm. telling you paraphrasing on a stage or at a seminar for, for, for a day. You don't know that they heard this thing three years earlier, but they waited two years to do it and then wait another six months to mm -hmm. really do it. So then they're factoring all that time in, like that's the time it took. No, that's how long it took because you kept playing around. Mm -hmm. You didn't stand up. If you stood up, it'd be immediate. That's what it says. Do you want to become rich? Do you want to become well, happy, healthy, whatever? It don't take that long. It don't. Have, otherwise, then what, 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 what are we doing? What are we waiting around for? I am is right now. What are we waiting for if I am is right now? But to your point, it's we put that condition on our desire. Yeah, I'm gonna get it, but it's gonna take. But you know, I got to. Well, but I am. But I am didn't do that. Do you want to become well? Well, you know, when I get around, nobody's around. That's what we do. And then we and then we act like it's got to take two to five. We put the two to five in there. Do you want to become well? If he would have just said yes, he would have stood up right then. But he didn't say yes. He had to go with all the reasons why he was down there and how long he was down there and whose fault it was. And no one told me. And I didn't know. And I didn't. But it didn't ask you for all that. You put all that in. And you're factoring that in like that's how long it takes. You added that time to your sentence. You added that time to your bid. You went to jail. You didn't have to. You could have been free right then. That's on you. According to your faith, be it unto you. Mm. Right. All right. Who else we got? Questions. Um, yes. The verse that you just had, um, something that said that to me was, um, Jesus never fixed the man. He just told the guy to remember who he was. Mm -hmm. And so that really stood out to me. Like he really wasn't fixing him. He didn't no. fix anything. He just told him, remember who you are. Yes. He made him go back to who he really was. Yes. My mom, I grew up, my mom telling me that. Remember who you are. Remember who you are when you're young. You're just like, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. But as you get older, you start to have enough life experience. You'd be like, oh, okay, I see what she was talking about now. She would sometimes just by looking at other people and be like, they don't, they real. What? Yeah, right? Let me remember who I am. Let me, now I know what she, same thing, right? You can, the number can look disfigured, but the value never is lost. It's never lessened in consciousness. You could have been a fool and acted one for two decades, but that that's just you acting a fool. That doesn't mean that's how consciousness sees you. That's not how I am sees you. It's willing to right now, just like when the prodigal son came home, as soon as he turned around, what did the king do? Ran out there and met him. Didn't sit around and be like, mm, mm, you back, huh? You back, huh? Oh, Chris Brown, they not loyal out here? Oh, okay. <laughs> It didn't, right? The king doesn't do that. Your consciousness doesn't do that. Jesus doesn't do that. God doesn't do that. Your awareness of being doesn't do that. You do that. You sit around like the like the prodigal son's brother start hating him. You sit around like Cain hating on Abel. You do that to you and you blame it on somebody else. But mm -hmm. you're doing that. You are doing that to yourself, telling you're not worthy. Oh, well, I've been gone so long. Well, what's the point? Oh, I'm too old. You did that to you. I am is always asking you, do you want to become what we doing? This is all I do. I am doesn't have nothing else to do but hang with you. It doesn't have, it's you. It can't be somewhere else. It's you. It doesn't have anything else to do but roll and ride with you. Mm. So then it's, it's, it's in its best interest to help you. It's in its own best interest to help you. That's why it says, do you want to become well? Ah, well, look, 
Stand man, stand up. I ain't got time today. I ain't got, I'm not about to sit here for another 38 years. I'm not about to do this. I gave you time to get yourself together. We getting up, right? You know, you talk to your kids, tie your shoes, is getting ready for school. And you look around, they still over there. And you like me. All right, now let's go. Let's go. Come on over here. You tie your shoes, tie their shoes real hard, right? <laughs> right? You just like, I told you, come on, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, you know how you do it. They can't feel their foot, but they know don't say anything. And they'd be like, you all right? And they'd be like, we like, mom, I, what? Nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing. And they try to loosen it in the back of the car while you're not looking. Because their whole foot then went numb, right? They get out the car limping. What's wrong with you running to class? Now they're running. They came. Yeah, I mean, they just terrorized, right? Because they sat around and played around too much. Now you ain't got no time to play with them. It's the same thing, everybody. I am is with you. It's rolling with you. It has nowhere else to be. It's within you. It's not separate from you. And it's asking you, do you want to become? Whatever it is you want, it's just that's what they're it's asking you in the form of an idea or a desire. Do you want to become? Stop saying anything but yes. When? Now? Yeah. Today? How much? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Now. Immediate? Yeah, that's me. That is me. Right now, not tomorrow, not later, not when I, not but, not they, nothing out. I'm talking to you, you're talking to me, grown folk talking, kids sit in the back, close the door, get out, go outside, period. Put that child mind to bed. That's it. You can't talk right now. I've already listened to you. I've been here for 38 years listening to you. I'm not about to do that anymore. I'm standing up now. This ground is this ground is not for me. I can't I'm not do the camping no more. That's it. That's it. I'm taking this mat up. This ain't no posturepedic. This ain't no, this is terrible. I'm standing up, picking this mat up, and I'm walking away from here. Do you think that person stayed at the pool? They'd be like, I've been around this pool long enough. Goodbye. Yeah. When you stand up and you pick up your mat, you walk away. Don't stay there. Don't keep talking about it, talking about them, talking about that, talking about what it used to be and how you used to walk away. Change your mind, leave, and do not come back. Do not turn on your around, around in your mind and stay there. Yeah, but I just want to tell you one more thing. You've had 38 years. Nobody want to hear you or see you. When you get out of jail and they open them gates, run before they change their mind. Run out. No, I don't need nothing. Just open the gate. I don't need nothing. I don't need, just let me out. I don't need nothing. Right? Same thing. All right, uh, Della. Yeah, hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, uh, I wanted to share earlier, but I didn't get a chance to. Oh, right. um, uh, basically, just like my experience with the Mindset Saturdays is kind of weird. Not weird, but like it's um, it was exactly what I needed at the exact moment in my life because um, it was like, we spoke about it, but like situations happened where I was just like, I didn't know what to believe in. Um, and I just found Vero through, I think, uh, the morning meetup. And then I just started going to the classes and I realized that like what I really needed to do was spend more time with myself, um, and crystallizing what my self image was, who, who I am. Um, and I got constant reminders from that, from these sessions, um, and doing that helped me get back on my feet, uh, to make a long story short and, you know, move forward in my life when it was at a point where it was like really stagnant. And um, I thought I was doing the right thing, but things just weren't working the way I wanted them, the way they should have been working. And, you know, it's crazy. But, yeah, so just um, just to wrap it up, like, yeah, so it was just these constant reminders of, OK, this is who I am. Remember, this is the only person that you need to convince is yourself. The only thing you need to do is hold and repeat these this image that you have of yourself. From that, everything else will change. And that's exactly what happened. So. There you go. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. 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 Wonderful. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's what all the information is for, right? It's not to join another group. It's not to have a wonderful, positive thinking and all the other stuff. This information is designed for you to use. And we and we try to break it down. Well, we break it down in a way where you can see yourself in it, understand to the best of your ability how to apply it. You take what you can take and you use what you can use right now as you understand it. And then you go off and you and you start, as we say in class, you practice coming here and you go out and play. 
And then yeah. that is where you really make the information your own, where you become yeah. a master of it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. 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 All right. Anyone else? It's good to see everyone. It's five after. Anybody have anything else to say before I let you get out? Enjoy the rest of your evening. I, I, I just think, go ahead. Go, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, I'm doing sales pitch. <laughs> I just want to say one more thing as it pertains to the timing and how people who have the experience. What I realized also now too, coach, is that a lot of the coaching and mentoring, they don't even coach you and mentor you on the job anymore or what it is that they do. The first thing that they start talking about now, and it's this, <laughs> I just got that revelation, is mentality. Because they realize now that it shouldn't have took them that long, but they'll still say to you that it took two years because it may take two years to even get through all of the junk, all of the matter, all of the things that we say we, can, we can't we can do or it can't be done now, but they all start now with mentality because they realize it's a shortcut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is what we're doing is taking a shortcut in the sense of saying, you know what? If I get my mind right, it may take me a day, may take me six months, but that's still shorter than two years, shorter than five years. And if I work on myself harder than I do on my job, I'll I'll go from making a living to a fortune, right? Just like Jim Rohn said, right? Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Working on, right? Working on yourself, working on your job will make you a living. Working on yourself will make you a fortune. That's, that's, it's just true. Like you said, when people get to the end and look back, they'll realize like everything changed when they changed their mind. It wasn't because they put in more hours. It wasn't, in, it wasn't because they got six feet taller. It wasn't because they got 12 more legs and 10 more arms, right? It was that they started to think differently. They started to consider different things. They consider themselves differently, right? And then they were able to say, you know what? I can be different. I can do different. I am different. Right. And then that made all the difference. You being different makes all the difference. That's it. That's all it is. Right. So absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Anything else? Um, Sarita, to that point, if you think about it, like when you take challenges or you go to certain webinars or calls, the first day or the first topic is always around um mindset, which when you said that, I'm like, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, I just wanted to share for those of you who are not, because um, a lot of us are in in Lucky's um, calls already, but for those who are not, we are extending an invite um, for the Mentality Club, which meets three times a week, and then Wisdom Study meets on Saturdays. Um, just inviting no pressure. All right. Well, hey, happy Saturday. It's good to see you all. Um, it's always good to see you all. It's always good to come back together again, right? And um, fellowship among like saints, right? Like-minded people. So it's always wonderful. Um, and I trust that this information you all take and, and, um, and apply to the best of your ability with where you are. Where you are is enough. It's it's enough to get started. Wherever you are, it's enough to get started. And if you will apply what you heard today, starting where you are, you will, it will, it is enough. You will get to where you want to go. If you apply it and you keep applying it, keep learning. It's a lifestyle. It's not a get out of jail free card. It's not, you know, anything like that. It's literally just what it takes to do or be or have what you want consciously, purposely, and in control. Right? That's what it is. We want to live life and be in control of our life. We want to have a say in our world, right? And not just be guided by every wind and, and, and theory and everything else, right? So, well, thank you all. Happy Saturday. It's good to see you all. Thank you for coming. And for those of you I see during the week and next weekend, I'll see you during the week and next weekend. For those of you who just came back for this, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming. Always good to see you. Keep doing well. Keep doing your thing. And uh, we'll catch up another time. All right, everyone. Thank you all.
Bye. Have a good night. Have a good night. Bye. Have a good day. Awesome.